Good afternoon. Thank you all for attending this afternoon's presentations. My name is Tristan Snyder, and I'm excited to share with you everything I've done throughout the course of my Blue Ridge Virtual Governor's School senior project. My original interest in marketing actually began when I was younger, more in the elementary school ages, and we actually had a book fair every year, and they would sell erasers, really cool looking erasers. And I guess my teacher used to call it devious, but I would buy probably 10 to 15 of these at about a dollar a piece. And once the book fair ended, I'd go back to all the other kids and sell them for about $3. And I figured at the time it was supply, demand, and the best way to market something is make them feel like they need it. So I found that by waiting till they couldn't buy them anymore, that served as a pretty good way to market and for money, I suppose. And also, when I was in middle school, I took a career placement test that said actually about nine on the list was marketing. And interesting enough, number one was hospitality. And I figured if you mix that with marketing, you get a pretty good idea of what I usually do in school, and that's talk. So I decided why not pursue it as a career. So when I was looking into different internship options, I decided marketing would be a great way to get a, some hands-on experience for something I might be interested in after high school. Uh, my mentors were Ms. Regina Cook and Mrs. Lindsay Woodward. Uh, Ms. Cook has a, a bachelor's degree from Old Dominion University and has experience in business consulting through her own business, Sam Solutions, LLC, where they promote businesses around the area and help them meet their goals. Also, she's the executive director of the Louisa County Chamber of Commerce and helps promote businesses through that forum. Uh, Ms. Woodward is a chemistry at Louisa County High School. She has a bachelor's of science from William & Mary and a major in biology with a minor in chemistry. Uh, my actual internship was with Ms. Regina Cook through the Louisa County Chamber of Commerce. I wanted to get a more hands-on experience on just how you market an event. So I worked with her and the rest of the Louisa County Chamber of Commerce to market the first annual Angry Angus cook-off. Uh, this cook-off was essentially made to promote agriculture in Virginia and also promote local artisans and vendors. All of the vendors and booths that were set up at the event were from people who either made their crafts in Louisa or set up local food carts around the area. Um, also, all of the meat provided for the event was from a farm in Louisa where it's all grown here, so it's all local foods. Uh, before the event, I never really understood how much time and effort goes into running one of these events. So, I mean, at one point they had me chopping wood at the event so that people could fuel their smokers and I also help cut meat and serve it to people when originally all I was supposed to be doing was directing traffic. So I figured that's a lot of work. And also throughout the experience, it really showed me just what marketing is. My, after the entire event was finished, I got to meet with my mentor again and we went over the financial side of how the event went. And we actually ended up turning about a $1,000 deficit in spending for the actual event. And originally when I was looking at the numbers, I figured, wow, it's terrible. We must be doing something wrong. But throughout her guidance and generally, I guess, yeah, general guidance, I was able, she told me it's not always about the money. It's about the connections and relationships you form through the first couple rounds. So since this was a first annual event, and they plan to do it again next year. They didn't want so much to turn a big profit. They were more looking to get people interested in the event and bring them out. We had over 200 people attend the event and they did actually, we had two competitors for the meet and it was, 
uh, the Gilboa Faith and Ministry Works and also the new restaurant at the lake, which I forgot the name of. Uh, also, moving into my research, I noticed that I didn't want to do so much a hands-on topic with my research. I wanted to delve more into the online aspects of it. So based on, I guess, general applications of technology, I'd say pretty much everyone in this room has access to or can at least get a hold of while they're at school technological devices that can connect to the internet. Uh, the main focus of my research was on how your online activity is being tracked at all times. No matter what you do to protect yourself from it, the, there are always, there's always somebody tracking or storing your data. Now, what most people don't know is that a lot of the data that's used isn't actually, well, a lot of the data collected isn't used, but they do use some of your data to form advertisements and other things that personally target you. Sort of like this thing on the screen here, I went onto amazon.com and Googled lion t-shirts and tacos, and the next day I came down and they'd formed a list of things that I should, that they want me to buy because I liked Lion t-shirts and tacos. So they save your data through HTTP cookies and other things like that. So without, so my other part of my research was on how to protect against some of the collection of data from the corporations. The main collectors of data for corporations is Microsoft, Facebook, Amazon, and Google. And I realized that, the, well, first, the countries that collect your data really aren't doing much with them. It's more for the, I guess you could look at the Patriot Act would be an example, where they collect your data in, a, in an attempt to more protect you than anything else. But in this instance, they're collecting your data in an, in a, an attempt to make money. So I found that there were several ways that you can actually protect against this. And through my internship, I was able to meet a lady named Daria Brzezinski, and she works with the Army in cybersecurity and things like that. And she said that the best ways to protect against um, corporations taking your data and advertising to you through that is to either block or delete your HTTP cookies from your computer as often as possible because these cookies are actually small pieces of data containing information that you essentially went somewhere or it keeps little profiles on what you've done while you're online. And if you delete that, it makes it much harder for them to personalize anything because they don't have as much data. Also, keeping things offline on external hard drives definitely helps to protect against online data stealing because you know, you're not online anymore, so it kind of makes it hard for them to steal it. And then also, using uh, search engines such as Google and Internet Explorer vastly increases your chances of data being saved. If you use anything such like DuckDuckGo, you can actually, they don't actually save your data anywhere near as much as Google and Internet Explorer do. For my community service, I actually, over the, my junior year, I had an idea with one of my buddies, Evan Green, and we were gonna start the high five club in high school. He essentially would go through the hallways and high five people every Friday, hype people up and try and spread kindness. So I figured, heck, we can turn this into a club and hold some events. So through this club, we, my community service is going to be creating an event and marketing uh, a world record breaking event at the high school for most high fives in one minute. And that event's actually scheduled for next, in the next couple of weeks and it'll take place and we are going to break a world record and hopefully also raise money for prosthetic research through sponsors and other donors. Um, the personal impact that I had from this whole project was mostly uh, just realizing how much communication is key in actually doing things in this environment and also getting hands-on experience with 
marketing. I definitely learned that without connections and personal relationships, it's a lot harder to get anything done when you need to. And one of the other things that I learned from this is that I don't actually want to pursue it as a career. I found that it was fun, but at the same time, it didn't involve anything that actually piqued my interest. For my future plans, I intend to attend William & Mary this fall and play baseball and major in pre-med. I'd like to extend a special thanks to Ms. Shannon King, Ms. Lindsay Woodward, and Ms. Regina Cook, and the Louisa Chamber of Commerce, also Evan Green, and other people listed here. Thank you. Take any questions now. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, it's actually very simple in your settings. It's almost like deleting a browser history, but you go into your settings and it's a separate thing and you say delete cookies. And most of the time, if it depends on your search engine, but in the settings, there should be something that says delete cookies and it, or you can block them, especially on your iPhones. There's actually a setting where you can turn off cookie collection altogether. Uh, next question, uh, Preston. Uh, yes, pre-medicine, and then I want to go to med school and then become either a cardiothoracic or orthopedic surgeon. Zeph. Yes. Okay, so every two weeks I would meet with my mentor uh, for a meeting, and she would assign me different things such as creating online brochures or uh, creating a sponsorship package that she could take to businesses around the county. And through these, uh, through those methods, I was able to help market for the event and talk to people. Also, I attended meetings where we talked about marketing plans and d overall discussed what we were going to do. Uh, Evan. Uh, my biggest challenge was probably the time management for the event. We st I started my internship in October and the event was in mid-November. So we had a little over a month to actually market and plan for this. So just managing my time and creating accurate and well-planned displays for my mentor to use. Uh, that was probably the biggest thing. Yes, sir. Uh, my research paper was on how to, what the different collection agencies are for your data online and how to protect against it. Um, you can also uh, you can create, you can go through multiple different satellite units. Um, if you want to get really complicated, you can hire people and they can run background things that'll scan for viruses, scan for people collecting your data. And actually, Daria Brzezinski, the lady that I interviewed for this, actually also runs a company where they will download software onto a computer and that software can protect from people collecting your data, hacking your data, um, generally using it for any purposes other than what you want. Uh, yes. Uh, generally, yes, you do because they, they like to turn a profit from stuff they've written. It's kind of like code. Um, is out. Uh, I actually personally didn't like that. I actually deleted the app entirely because of it. But I found that one of the things that I really learned from this entire experience is that there's never any privacy to begin with. So you can protect against it as much as you can, but it's more of a minimal, minimalizing effect than anything. Because even the, 
if you're, the cor corporations aren't collecting your data, the government's collecting your data. And at some point, there's really nothing you can do to protect against all of that. Ms. J. Um, it's probably from visiting websites that aren't thoroughly vetted See, and using social media way too much. Uh, lots of kids, especially when you do research, they, a lot of kids don't know opening the wrong email can make you susceptible to data collection, anything like that. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you.